One of the authors of that study is Dr. William Stewart, and he joins us now from Glasgow. Thank you very much for being on the program, sir. And I'd like to begin by asking you how you see the key findings of your study. I, I, I mean, I think this is a landmark study uh, in that over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, the, the world of research and sport has been challenged with, does contact sport perhaps lead to uh, an increased risk of dementia? And I think we now have an answer to that, that yes, uh, contact sport is associated with an increased risk of these degenerative brain diseases. I imagine that you want to maybe be careful about how this study is discussed, but, but is there a cause, do you think, an effect that, that really definitively points to certain actions in football as leading then to dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease much later in life? I mean, that's, that's a really important point, and that's where the research will go now, is to try and identify the specific risk factor. But I think, I think there's enough in the last uh, 10 to 15 years at least of research to say that the one thing that stands as, a, as a, a standout risk factor that we should consider at first is exposure to the head injury and the head impacts, because we and others have, have looked at the brains of, of former footballers with dementia and see a particular pathology that really is just associated at the moment with head injury. And I think we also see that in the data we, we uh, published yesterday, that goalkeepers uh, compared to outfield players uh, receive far fewer prescriptions for dementia-related drugs than you would expect. Um, your report, I mean, it's not, it's not only concerning news. Um, your report also said that there are other clear health benefits to playing football. What were those? Well, I think that's really important because we, we not only were we looking at dementia and neurodegenerative disease, we're looking at other lifelong health outcomes. And what we saw was that mortality from ischemic heart disease uh, and from some cancers was, was much lower in our footballers than we saw in our population controls. And so we've got, we've got a picture here where there is clear benefit of participation in sport, but there's this one problem we, we're looking at, which is this degenerative brain disease. And if we could only deal with that, perhaps we would have a much better system, a much better outcome from football. And you've indicated that the research on that really needs to continue now in order to establish, um, you know, if there is indeed a ca causational effect. Um, but, you know, given what we know right now, coaches, parents, schools, um, should people continue playing or, you know, allowing their children to play, for example? Should stricter rules be put in place? What would be your recommendation? I mean, for sure, sure people could, could, should continue playing. There's no question of that at all. You know, we see health benefits from sport across the board. But I think what I would say is that, that this should be a wake up now for sport, not just football, but all sport, that head injuries should be taken very seriously. Exposure to head impact should be minimized as far as possible. And so I would say to parents that if they're taking their kids along to sport this weekend and dropping them off with a coach, they should ask the coach, you know, how do you react when a kid gets a head injury? What's your policy on head injury? And if they're not sure or, or look a bit vague, take the kids to another sport or to another coach. Dr. William Stewart of the University of Glasgow and co-author of the report that we've been discussing. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.